Hello students, welcome to STA Academy. Hope the part one of real numbers was informative for you. As it was the introduction to real numbers, we have just seen the glimpse of the topic real numbers in part one. Now here I am as promised back with the important questions to prepare you all for your exams. So now the questions which we are going to solve in the today's session are the very important questions are frequently asked questions in your final board exams for CBSC, SSC both. So there might be some difference between the numbers which are used, but the pattern of the questions, the form of the questions would be the same. So if you understand the concept, the idea how to solve it, then definitely you can score full marks in this topic. So when I will be covering, when I will be solving these important questions, I will be trying to cover all the basic concepts behind the chapter behind the topic. Okay, so now let us start the question. This is a very important question, mostly as for four marks and in the short answers, so four marks in SSE board and in short answers questions in the CBSE board. So use Euclid's division lemma to show that the square of any positive integer is either of the form 3m or 3m plus one for some integer m. So uh, before we start, um, many of you might have an idea about Euclid's division lemma. For those who might not have an idea or who might have uh, not able to recall it from your previous uh, classes, let us just quickly uh, brush up your concept by recalling the definition of Euclid's uh, definition lemma. What exactly the statement actually? So here it is. Euclid's division lemma states that for any two positive integers, say a and b, the condition a is equals to bq plus r, where r is greater than equals to zero and less than b always holds true. What does that mean, right? Mathematically, if you see the mathematically, the dividend is equals to the divisor times that is into coefficient plus a remainder. Let us take an example for our better understanding. You might have uh, thinking like all these times that why why this Euclid's division lemma? Why, why do we have to use this lemma? Why does this statement is so very complicated? No, not at all it is complicated. Just remember that for any two integers a and b, a is equals to b times q is nothing but the coefficient. And we have taken the dividend and the divisor plus coefficient and this R denotes the remainder. If suppose if you take a very simple and easy example, let us take 24 divided by 6. What? So if we just divide, if I just use this method also to divide, 6 fours are 24. And then this is a zero, right? So now here we very well know that what is the remainder? This is the remainder and this is the quotient. This is the dividend. Sorry, this is the divisor and this is the dividend, right? So now here it states, what does the Euclid's division lemma states? We are just trying to prove the Euclid's division lemma using a simple and basic example. We know that 24 divided by 6 equals to 0. And what is the dividend here? I said 24 is the dividend. And what is the divisor? The divisor is 6 and times quotient. What is the quotient we got here? 4, right? And plus, what is the remainder? 0 is the remainder. So 24, 6 times 4, 6, 4 is so 24. That means we've got the same in the LHS and RHS to prove the Euclid's division lemma. If suppose if I take another example like 35, divided by 2. Let's take 45 divided by 2. So 2 times 2 ones are 2 minus 1 0 this 5 comes down 2 7 are 14 and minus 1. So we here we have got 1 is the remainder 17 is the quotient this is the divisor and this is the dividend right. 
Now, again, if we say that dividend is equal to divisor into quotient plus remainder, so dividend is nothing but 35 equals to divisor is 2 and times how much is the quotient is 17 and then plus what is the remainder? We've got 1. So which gives you 2 7s are 34 plus 1 which is equals to nothing but 35. So this is how we prove Euclid's division lemma. So children just uh, students we just have to keep it very simple whenever we are learning any statement or with the, when, whenever we are learning any theorem that means this theory has been proven with a practical mathematically practical situations and examples. So this simply involves the division procedure here. Okay so now let's uh, come back to the question which is a very very important question children so if suppose sometimes in place of m they may ask you q they may ask you 3q they may ask you 2q so the procedure for all the such type of questions will be the same you don't have to worry at all so just try to keep it very simple okay now let us just try to solve starting from first so let's take let x it be any positive integer because as per the statement right any positive integer and y equals to 3 because we are not going to go beyond 3 that that is the range which we have decided here so now let's take by you know by euclid's you already know what is euclid's division lemma right or we also say algorithm. The statement we say it as lemma and the way how we prove it, we call it as an algorithm. So x equals to 3q plus r. Like for some integers, you take for some integer. Q, which is q is greater than 0 and r is equals to 0. Okay. So now if you take greater than zero, if you take one, two, as R is greater than equals to zero, right? So we can just take, and then we have also taken that Y equals to three. So let's limit this R value to the less than three here. Okay, now here comes. So we say, therefore, X is equals to three Q. Why we are saying x equals to 3q? Because r here we have taken first as 0. So when we say that 3q plus r means r will automatically become 0 and we will be left with only 3q. So first, now let me write it down, down the step by step here. Okay, let us first take in case. Therefore, let us take the first case where if r equals to 0. What happens then x equals to 3q plus r right so therefore x equals to 3q plus 0 which gives a x equals to what students x equals to 3q this would be the first condition right now what happens next when we take if r equals to 1 come on x equals to 3q plus 1 yes and then if r equals to 2 then x equals to 3q plus 2 are you getting the point here yeah this is a very simple and basic idea here so now let's take let's write it down in a proper manner so therefore now we can say that therefore x equals to 3q 3q plus 1 and 3q plus 2 so now as per the given question we have taken the squares now uh, now the questions now the question what is the asking in the question here in the question, it is mentioned that the square of the any positive integer, right? So now as per the given question, what you have to do here, you have to take the square on both the sides. So I am just writing here for your convenience, for your better understanding. So, okay, 
as per the given question if we take square on both the sides we get what x square is equals to 3q square student we are taking the first one here we are taking the first one here just see carefully the first one which we have got okay this one this we are dealing this with this first i will let me just circle this one now this one we are considering now here x square we are just squaring 3x let me just write down here x square sorry So what we are just doing here, we are just taking the square on both the sides. So let me just write down here, x equals to 3q. We are just squaring on both the side. I'm just writing it again and again so that you don't get confused. Okay, now this becomes what? This becomes what? 3x, we know very little that 3 square is nothing but 9. Sorry, 3 square is nothing but Nine and Q is nothing but square as it is, right? So now we know very well that either we can write three as three into three and Q square as well, right? Three into three is nothing but nine, one and the same thing. So here we are just assuming like let three Q square is equals to M. So whatever we are getting over here, we are just assuming this as M, okay? Now let's see therefore, now next one. What is next one now? Can you just guess? X square is equals to 3M we are taking because we have taken this 3q square is equals to m. So that is why we just now found out that 3q square is equals to m. So we have taken this as 3m. Why are we taking as this 3m? Because the x square is equals to 3 into 3q square. And when we just have to take this 3q square as m so we have to keep this 3 we are just taking this 3q square as m and we are just simply change, substituting this 3q square and the rest of the 3 we are taking as it is as 3m i hope this this step is clear uh, this is a very important step so i hope this step is clear so now this we are considering to be the equation one here. Now let's see next. Now let's take the next one here, which is the next one here. This is the next one here. This is the next condition here. So here we say that x equals to x equals to 3q plus one. Now what happens on squaring on both sides? X square equals to three Q plus one square, right? So this is something it is in the form of A plus B whole square, right? Do you recall the formula of A plus B whole square? A square plus two AB plus B square. This is something in the form of that formula. So we are just simply going to substitute uh, this formula into this statement here. So this becomes, this is our A, this is our B. So A square means 3Q square plus 2 into A is 3Q, B is 1 and plus what is P square? 1, 1 square, right? So which will give us what here? Again, 3, 3 is a 
9q square plus 2 into 3 gives you 6q plus 1, right? So this is nothing but we just trying to take, we'll just keep this one outside and we try to take 3 common here. So which means 3 3s are 9, right? So 3q square plus 3 2 is a 6, 2q and we'll keep this one outside the bracket. Okay, students, so this is how we are going. So now what is the next step here? So now what is the next step? Next step what we are going to do is that now we are going to substitute, right? Substituting 3q square plus 2q is equals to m here in this statement. And then what would do we get if we do that? In place of this, we are just going to substitute m. So this 3 will be as it is. And then this entire thing we are going to take it as m and then it becomes plus. So this becomes upon this becomes our equation two. Okay, now next. Now what was the next one? I told you right. The next one would be three q plus two. Let me just highlight it for you. This would be the next one which we are going to do. Three q plus two. So let's take x equals to three q plus two here. What happens now? Let's do it. Now when we uh, square x equals to 3q plus 2, we get x, e x square equals to 3q plus 2 square, whole square again, right? So now you remember again the same formula a plus b whole square is equals to a square plus b square plus 2ab1 in the same thing, right? So just taking, assuming this is to be a and this is to be b, we take 3q whole square plus this is to be b, which is 2 square plus this 2ab2 2 into, this is a is 3q into 2, which is nothing but 3, 3 is a 9, 9q square plus 2, 2 is a 4, plus 2, 3 is a 6, and then we have 6 and also we have 2, 2, 3 is a 6, 6, 2 is a 12. So we get 12 Q, right? So which is nothing but here again, what we will do here is that we will just try to keep, take 3 as common and we will just try to make it the common uh, like um, make it something like this so that we can have our statement 3 okay how do we take 3 common here okay now we need to adjust one more step here so that we can take 3 common here 9 q square plus instead of writing 4 we will write 3 plus 1 plus 12 q now, do you think can we take 3 common here? Let's try. 3, 3, 3 is a 9. Plus, instead of this 3, we can take just simply 1, right? Plus 3, 4 is a 12. And what about this plus 1? This will come down here. Okay. So, again, what we will do? Again, substituting. 3q square plus 4q plus 1 equals to m. What do we get here? We are just simply substituting what we have taken in common. So we get x square is equals to 3, this 3 as it is, and the entire thing under brackets we have substituted with m. So that would become m, and this plus 1 would be as it is. So this is our third statement. So now hence from 1, 2, 3, like we have taken example like this, hence from 1, 2, 3, we can just simply say that the uh, conclude that the square of any positive integer is either of the form 3m or 3m plus 1 for some integer m. Let me just write down this for you. 
Hence, from 1 to entry, we conclude that the square of any positive integer is either of the form 3m or 3m plus 1 for some integers m. So, this was the problem uh, and this is how it is. And then we just have solved a very important problem and it's a very basic simple concept. Okay. So, now let's just see what is our next problem. Yes, so uh, this is a four marks question and a short answer. This is a very short question actually. Uh, this uh, usually comes for a two marks problems. So now here I am just going to solve, uh, I'm going to give you uh, the more number of bits, like the first one, 140, and then 3825, then the fourth one is 5005, and the fifth one is 7429 and i will be solving only two out of this so that the rest of one you should be able to solve it on your own so let us solve the first one how to solve this we know that to find the product of its prime factors we need to do the prime factorization so using the division of a number by prime numbers like method we can get the product of prime factors of 140 how do we do that we just we it's very very simple so we just have to do the prime factorization, okay? So let us take prime factorization means we first start, we involve only prime numbers to divide it. So let's take two, two sevens are 14 and then zero, then comes two threes are six. What happens when we take six, we just have to subtract six from seven, remaining one here that one will be added to this zero makes it 10 and then we can do it two fives at 10 then comes five seven so 35 then comes seven one seven so what is the product of this prime so we know that right so it is 140 is equals to two times two times five times seven which is nothing but two square and five. Seven. Why do we say the product of the prime? Do you see all of these are prime numbers? And when we express this 140 as the product of the prime numbers. That is why we say it as a product of the primes. I hope uh, this would have been clarified your doubts if you have any in this concept. These are the guaranteed questions which would be asked in your question. Now let us solve the second is easy. You can do it. Let us solve the third one. Third solution. 3, 8, 2, 5. Let me just go down. Yeah. Now let's do this one, three, eight, two, five. Again, the prime. Remember the divisibility rule. Whenever we have to divide any number, we just check for the divisibility rule in the ones place. If we have a five or zero, that means this number is divisible by five. But suppose if, ha if we have zero, two, four, six, eight, in the ones place, that means these numbers are divisible by two okay and suppose if we have zero or five in the ones place that means these numbers are divisible by five and if we have zero then this number is divisible by ten this is some these are the something divisibility rules even for the divisibility rule of three is also there so we just add all the sum we just add the sum of the digits if the sum of the digit is divisible by 3, then the number is said to be divisible by 3. This is the basic uh, divisibility rules of uh, which we have already learned in the lower classes so I just thought of brushing up for you so now let us start because we have five in the ones place that means it is divisible by five so let us start with the five so five you know 38 does not comes in the table of five so we will go for the least one which is the least 
Yes, 35 comes 7. So 35 and when we subtract 35 from 38, we get 3 here, which becomes 32 here. 32 again doesn't come in the table 5. We get for the least closest number, which is 30. So 5, 6, or 30. And then 2 is again remaining because 32 minus 30 is 2. So this 2 becomes 25 and 5, 5, so 25. Next is again, because we have 5 in the ones place, again, it will go with the table of 5. 5 and the 5. 7 minus 5 is 2. So we have 2 here. This becomes 26. 26 doesn't come in the table of 5. See, we go for 25. 5 fives are 25. And again, 26 minus 25 is 1. This becomes 15. And 5 threes are 15. Now this is 153. So we do not have this in the table of 5 because this is 3 in the ones place. So what we will do? Yes, so let us check with the table of 17. 17 nines are 153. Then comes 3 times 3 because here we, we just have to have the prime factorization, right? Okay, so this is 3 once 3. So what is the product of the prime for this one? 5 times 5 times 17 times 3 times 3. This is nothing but we just simply write it in the ascending order, which is 3 squares times 5 square times 70. So I hope you understood this concept, how to solve this. This is a very scoring topic. You can easily score uh, marks in the very short answers, like two marks questions by solving these problems. Now let us proceed to the next question, which is also very simple and easy, which is finding out the LCM and HCF of the numbers. And this is also very easy and scoring topic in your final exams. Find the HCF and LCM of the following. HCF is highest common factor, LCM is least common multiple. So how do we do that? This is again involve your factorization method. Let us try to find out for 510 and 92. How do we do that? Again, we have to factorize, find out the factors. Okay, so again, two to the four, one remaining, two fives are 10, then one remaining, two fives are 10. Again, we have five in the ones place, so it won't go with the table of two, but we have to again check for the divisibility rule of three, two plus five is seven, seven plus five is 12. So that means 12 is divisible by three, so we will check for the table of three. So three eights are 24, 25 minus 24 is one, and one goes here, 50 15, 3 fives are 15. Now we'll try with the table of 5. 5 and the 5, 8 minus 5 is 3, 35, 5, 7 is 35. Now this is 17 times 1. So which gives 5, 10 is equals to 2 times 3 times 5 times 17. Okay, this if I express this in the exponential form, the powers are 2 power 1, 3 power 1, 5 power 1, and 17 power 1. We do, when we don't have anything in the power, there always exists 1. Okay. Now next is 92. What do we do with the 92? Again, we are going to factorize. 2 4 is 8. 9 minus 8 is 1. This one will be here. 2 6 is 12. Then 2 2 is 4. 2 3 is 6. So now 23 is a prime number, so we don't have it. So now which is 92 is equals to 2 times 2 times 23. Again, we say that 2 times 2 is multiplied 2 times so 2 to the raise of power 2, and which is 23 here. So now how we just find out the HCF? We have a very, very easy and basic a uh, statement for HCF to find out the HCF. Let me just write it down here for you. We find HCF by product of smallest power of each common prime 
factor. So this will become, what is the each common prime factor? We have only two as the common factor, right? And this power is 2 here and this power is 1 here. So we will go for the smallest power. So which is 2 power 1 here. So we will go for 2 power 1 which is equals to 2 is the HCF. And how about the LCM? How do we find out the LCM? Let me just, yeah. So LCM is? Yeah, how do we find LCM? LCM is equals to product of the greatest power of each prime factor. See, product of the greatest power, sorry, power of each prime each prime factor. So what would be the LCM here? We need to take the product of the greatest power of each prime factor. What is the greatest power first starting from two here? Which one is greatest? One is greatest, two is greatest. Two power one is greatest, two power two. So we just have to take the power. So two power two times here it's only three is there. 3, then 5 power 1, 17 power 1 times 23 power 1, which is equals to nothing but 23,460, which is the LCM. So students, this is how we take out the HCF and LCM of the given pair of numbers. So I just want to give you a few more problems to practice here. You just do it by yourself because I have explained you how to do it for your practice, okay? And 54. Let me just move this. Okay. 54 and practice this also for three numbers, the method would be same. These are again very important one, just practice this 300 and, okay, that is enough. Just two more, you just practice, that is okay. Now let us uh, learn one, let us practice one more very important concept, very important problem, but very easy. So students, this is also a very important question. Given that HCF of 306 and 657 is equals to 9, we need to find the LCM. So the numbers can be different as I always say. So here we just have to use the these steps. So we know that already we know that the HCF into LCM is equals to the product of numbers for which we are finding out the HCM and LCM, right? So here HCF is given as 9 already, right? The HCF is given as 9. So we'll just substitute 9 into the LCM as it is, which is equals to product of number means these two numbers. So 306 into 657. So now what we will do, we'll keep the LCM here as it is. Using the transposing method, this nine will come down in the denominator. So we'll take the nine into the denominator, okay? And then we can just cancel nine ones are, nine sevens are 63, and this three of 65 minus 63 is two, 27 means nine three is 27. And hence, LCM is equals to what? We just have to multiply 306 by 73, which gives us 36 are 18, and three zeros are zero, one, three threes are nine, then seven six are 42, 
then seven zeros are zero, then four, then seven threes are 21, which is eight, three, three, this carry one, two, two. So two, two, three, three, eight is our and so hence the LCM. So students, this is how easy step-by-step -step procedure we follow to solve the very important problems from real number part one. So this was it for the today's session. So in the next class, we are going to learn about uh, the rational and irrational numbers. We will also see the terminating and non-terminating rational numbers as well as the non-terminating irrational numbers and very important problems based on the irrational numbers we will be involving the root no, root of the numbers as well so uh, let's see you in the next session then uh, meanwhile just uh, li please like do like share and subscribe to our channel so that many of the students can be benefited from these classes and i hope all of you understand and follow my explanation and just try to complete the bits the problems the questions which i have given you so that the practice makes perfect and you can understand the concept thoroughly after practicing thank you so much for watching